Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So I just ordered a bunch of lithium polymer batteries from Hobby King. Uh, 18 of these, in fact. And I was going to use 6 of them now, so I just checked them with a voltmeter to see if the voltage was somewhat equal. It surprised me quite a bit that there is in fact almost 200 millivolts in difference from the lowest charged one to the highest charged one directly from the manufacturer. If you have seen my videos about the world's brightest flashlight, as I claim it is, you have seen that I had one of these uh, big battery packs fail, basically the first time it was used. I didn't actually check it when I got it, I just hooked it up to the charger, charged it up and then I started using it. But apparently one of the cells were bad and it had uh, very low capacity, so it got uh, discharged uh, too far down. It needed to be replaced anyway, but perhaps I could have avoided it swelling up and uh, almost exploding if I had just measured it uh, before I charged it. So that's what I started to do now. I measured all the voltages and I noticed that there is uh, 197 millivolts in difference between the lowest and the highest one. And it's just out of these six batteries. I also want to quickly mention that if you like my videos I would greatly appreciate if you would consider supporting my channel. And supporting doesn't mean you have to pay anything. You can click my Amazon affiliate links, which you can find in the description of all the newer videos. And by doing that, every time you buy something from Amazon within a short period of time, from you click the link, then I get a small percentage of the revenue that Amazon makes. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps support the channel anyway. But if you do want to donate money directly, you can go to my Patreon page, which you can also find in the description. And you can support with uh, as little as $1 per month. And if you don't want to do any of that, well, that's fine as well. You can just watch the videos. They are free after all, so... And I won't even ask you to turn off the ad blogger. Anyway, I hope you uh, do enjoy the videos. So what I'm going to do now is to charge these two batteries to... Uh, 4.2 volts and then I'll do a discharge test to see how much capacity is in them and then after that I'll uh, charge them up again to 3.2 volts and uh, I'll let them sit for a day or so. I know you're not really supposed to do that but I want to see if one loses uh, the voltage faster than the other one so perhaps it could have some internal leakage or something and perhaps a day won't be enough to tell that but uh, yeah we'll see so I'll just charge it with a bench supply. I think that's uh, the most convenient for a single cell. And one thing to be careful of, <laughs> at least with the HP supplies, is that this one up here has a voltmeter, so I can actually stick this in to the power supply while it's turned off. And I can just uh, read the voltage back. However, I can't do that with this one down here, and I <laughs> Uh, tried that with a lithium cell actually and it has some kind of different reverse current protection so that if you hook a voltage up to it it'll just sink all the current uh, that it can. It has no uh, voltmeter function. It also means that if you're charging something and the power cuts out it will uh, short out your load here. In this case it's a battery that's not very good. For a circuit board or something it, it, it doesn't really do any harm but that's one thing to be careful about. These lithium cells can give a lot of current and they could uh, damage something or catch fire. So I'm going to use this one where it won't happen. So we'll set the voltage to uh, 4.2 volts and we'll set the current to about 1C, 900 milliamps. And we will uh, turn it on. So I charged both batteries and uh, as expected the one with the lower voltage took a lot more charge than the one that was almost fully charged. So this doesn't tell anything yet except this battery with the lower charge is probably okay but we still don't know anything about this one. I do expect them to be good though it's probably just that they came with different charge out of the factory. Maybe one is slightly older than the other and the charged those to a different voltage. 
It's approximately 10-15 minutes since I charged them and now let's check what the cell voltages are. Oops. So this one is down to 4.186 and this one uh, 4.19 uh, Even though I said I was going to use the small power supply, I actually charged them both at the same time. So I used a large supply for for this battery. And I charged them to the exact same voltage and uh, the exact same current going into the battery when I stopped the charge. Uh, around 20 milliamps for both. It looks like this is dropping a little bit faster though. Okay, so let's do a discharge test of the batteries. Uh, for that I'm going to use the DC load that I made. We're going to use a constant current of uh, 900 milliamps. Let's just do 1C again. So the Fluke is saying 4.198 uh, so the uh, Unity is almost 10 millivolts out now actually. It's no big deal but something to keep in mind. It could also be the Fluke of course but <laughs> uh, I'll put my money on the <laughs> Unity being out. Anyway let's start the discharge test. I'll get a stopwatch and then we can see how much uh, capacity is in the battery. So the readout current here on my load is out a little bit. It is actually very close to the 900 milliamps that we uh, that we put in. It's just the ADC is not very linear in the load and uh, I think I need to change it at some point in time. And at half an hour we're down to 3.7 volts. Uh, still on the load of course so it, uh, it looks promising that we're going to get the 900 milliamps out of it. So we're getting close to 3.3 volts and that's why I'm going to stop it right about now. So the stopwatch is at 59 minutes and it's very close to the claimed 900 milliamp hours. So now let's test the other one. It looks like the other battery has dropped a little bit further. Now we're at 4.185 volts. But it's still pretty normal, I think. So let's start it. And now we just have to wait another hour, hopefully. <laughs> and the second battery is almost discharged. Uh, this one is going to be very, very close to 900 milliamp hours. And stop. So one hour and nine seconds. And just for completion, I should probably show that when we set it to 900 milliamp hours, we get that almost exactly, even though this is uh, 876. So it turned out both batteries are very close to the claimed 900 milliamp hours. This one is missing about 14, and this one has a few extra milliamp hours. So it turns out the voltage of the cell when the battery is new has nothing to do with the actual capacity in the battery. They must charge them to different voltages. or It could be either that they have two different production lines and they don't charge them to the same voltage, or perhaps one battery was made earlier than the other, and they charge them to a different voltage at that time. Anyway, I'll charge up the batteries again, and then I'll let them sit for a while and see if this one has some uh, internal leakage. The leakage could be very small, of course, and it could take months or weeks before we can see a change. But I'll try anyway. So, so I went and charged both batteries to 4.105 volts, and it is now two days later, so we can check the voltage on them. I don't really have an idea about what is uh, good or what is bad actually, so it's just uh, doing it for the sake of doing it, I guess.
So this is uh, 4.91 and this one uh, 4.91 so exactly the same down to the millivolt uh, now I didn't expect it to be that good I did charge them to 4.105 volts uh, down to the millivolt but I kinda expected it to drift a little bit differently over the two days so I think we can safely conclude that both of these batteries are equally good and if this one had any leakage it is so low that it doesn't really matter and also at this rate there's no way it could drop that far since it was manufactured if it was the same voltage as this one when it left the factory so to sum up this is probably only valid for single cell lithium polymer batteries if you go to big packs like these I am pretty sure they balance them before they leave the factory so they should have approximately the same voltage and if it doesn't then you need to test it before you start using it so I guess that's it for this video thanks for watching and I will catch you soon for the next one see you